In this video, we're going to take a look at how to organize your teams and channels in Microsoft Teams, how to set up Microsoft Teams for your whole organization, and more importantly, how to think about arranging teams in Microsoft Teams. So stick around for all of that. This is a old webinar that I used to run. And if you go through and you think it's a bit complicated and you want some help, that's what we do at MeTime. So book a call using the link in the description below if you get through this video and think, actually, I just want someone to help me and walk me through this. That's what we do. But take a look. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Our plans miscarry because they have no aim. When you don't know which harbor you're aiming for, no wind is the right wind. We don't want to have uh, disparate stuff going on that we don't know what we're trying to aim for. We want to get a decent structure, have a good vision in our minds about where we're going to aim so that when we come on to phase two and start planning how we're going to get there, at least to know what we're aiming for. So uh, as I said before, the lessons in this section of the program are always based on what's the one thing you can do such that by doing it, everything else is easier or unnecessary. So this is going to be the harbour to which we are aiming first. And again, we start with team structure, as this makes collaboration, finding files, SharePoint, planner, automation, questionnaires, communications, etc., all easier and usually the reason people do not get the most out of Microsoft 365, for example. So bringing it all together, the first thing we're working towards through the whole of phase one and phase two is working out in the open. It's the one thing that makes everything else easier or irrelevant. It's going to be the biggest cultural change of, of anything that we're going to look at. And therefore, it makes all other changes easier. Uh, but it also requires the most pain, most likely. So once you've got through all that pain, everything else is going to be easier, which is, uh, is a good place to be. Uh, and it's got the quickest benefits of time saving. As a reminder, we want a digital version of an open plan office to allow serendipity of ideas, see what others are working on and move towards more, working more out in the open. Um, but also we want people to feel safe in doing their day jobs in teams, which is why we roll out really slowly in phase two. We're not big uh, advocates of these people on uh, Microsoft videos. Oh, we, you know, we rolled it out to 20,000 people in a day. It's like, well, you might have done, but... I know the companies that they're talking about. I know people in the companies that they're talking about, and they're not they're not using it properly. So there's no point in just rolling, saying you've done a project and rolled it out. We you know we're not bothered about that. We're not bothered about the vanity metrics. We're bothered about actually people getting on, but really understanding it and making some benefits in the way that they can work more efficiently. Which is why we do it really slowly because change is actually quite slow. Um, and again, there's no point in putting everyone on Teams if they don't collaborate. So we're not putting people on Teams for the sake of it. We're looking to gain some benefit from working out in the open, having targeted communications, faster time to decision making and everything in one place. Obviously, if they're not the right people, we should come to phase two, thinking about which people we're going to get at, uh, in which order. But as you're thinking about team structure, don't think that you need the entire organization on Teams. Really. If you're getting overwhelmed, focus on where it's going to be the most uh, value. So getting the structures right is the key to accelerating working out in the open. Um, remember, we're trying to create the digital equivalent of well thought through open plan office, places to collaborate, places to work in private, places to bump into others and talk about what they're working on. Uh, as I've alluded to, the change will be bigger than you think. Even if you're an organization where you've got teams turned on already and people have set up their own teams and, and all that stuff, and it's you know you want to get some control and some structure over it, even if people are using teams right now, do not underestimate the change in trying to move people towards this way of working, working out in the open. Because as I say, uh, a few times, if you left people to their own devices, they're just going to set up quite small teams, probably people they already know and they might not even be working you know the way they the way that you want in terms of co-authoring and, and working on stuff together as much as you might think anyway and even if they are trying to move them into you know an organization wide team or a really big team is quite a big uh, mental leap for some people and uh, some of our previous clients have, uh, have found that you know most surprising that people are, are quite fearful about that but if you can push through that pain, and that's what we're going to help you do in phase two, the benefits are huge. So as we keep anchoring on four hours per person per week, 
you know, completely changes, uh, you know, uh, the engagement of an organization. If you give that time back to the, to the people that are, are getting it, you know, four hours a week, it's half a day a week, they can go and, you know, just not work and see their family. Or, they, you know, if they want to, they can do more work, get more done and uh, and rise up through the organization. Um, but like I say, there's going to be some pain along the way. Um, and as we go through thinking about structures and, and you know, really starting getting to the meat of it now and, and sketching out what your structure is going to be, remember this is what your structure would ideally look like if you were starting from scratch. So if you had no SharePoint, no other team set up, we're starting with a blank canvas so that we know ideally where we want to get to. And then as we go through phase two, we'll get into pragmatism about, well, is it really important that you move to that before you build other stuff on? Or how you know how good is your structure already? Um, do you just want to move to that over time? And therefore, you might end up with a different plan. Um, if you're in this program, we sort of recognize that most organizations will either have locked down teams completely and employees are only using chat and video calling and getting bad habits from that, or Teams is uh, on for everybody, which is the default if you've not changed the default. Anyone can set up a team and therefore, you know, there'll be teams that you might not even know about that are out there. Um, and therefore, most teams will be set up by individual managers, say, or individual uh, contributors for their little team and therefore be too small to get all the benefits. Uh, either of these has its challenges and we need to manage the change towards our ideal end state from one of these things over time, which we do in phase two. Right now, we're creating our best guess structure to fulfill the principles we want to change our organizational culture. In phase two, we'll be testing and iterating. So like I keep saying, there's no need for perfection. It's better to get a structure that you're happy with and you've got a vision about doing. And then we're going to iterate and see if it works or not throughout phase two anyway. So don't spend too long on it, but it is important. We've got enough of a plan that we know where we're aiming. So in the next few lessons after this one, there's going to be examples of what a structure could look like when we put it all together for a smaller company, a medium sized company, a large and or multi geographical company and a project based company. So some of those are in a bit more depth than what we covered in the team structure. Um, some are just a recap so you can get back to it quite easily. Um, but hopefully it helps to split those out because you can just choose your own adventure and jump to the one that is most like your company. And remember, structures are the most important thing we need to get right first. So don't be afraid to ask questions on this. But as a counter, you're not really gonna know what works until you try it anyway. So don't get paralyzed by planning. Uh, if you've got a question, just ask. Um, there's no stupid questions. So we just wanna plan enough to have conviction of your vision. Because I guess as soon as you start trying to roll this out to people and they uh, bombard you with, well, why are we doing it? Um, I don't wanna do this. I think it's the wrong thing to do. You need to have planned enough that you've got real conviction about what vision you want to move to. Um, and we go through some uh, counters to, to resistance in phase two anyway. It's part of change management. But basically, we just want to try stuff, test it and adapt and have that sort of mindset that, look, yeah, we, this is the vision we want to go to. This is the way you were going. We're going to try some stuff. We'll test it out. And if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll change it. There's no harm in that. We're not uh, beating up politicians for U-turns in this in this course. Listening and, and changing stuff based on feedback is a good thing. And if you're struggling with business process and you're not sure where to start, um, you know, don't feel overwhelmed. Just schedule some time in a Q&A call and we can go through it together. Cool. So just some tips on sort of clarifying your thinking as you go through this phase it's really important to um, you know think about both process and the structure at the same time because we don't want to be setting stuff up where you can actually just remove a process and it's not actually adding any value anyway um, so we don't want to set up a massive structure if uh, you know the structure that we're setting up is for a bit of the business that doesn't really add any value so we always want to think with the Pareto principle which is the 80 20 rule um, and thinking you don't need a team or channel for everything, just 80% of the uh, value with 20% of the work. So some questions you can ask yourself as you go through is what's the 20% of collaboration that produces 80% of value to organization? Start there and build out from there. 
what 20% of customers, brands, products, or projects, depending on what your focus is, produces 80% of the value to the organization. Start with those people and start thinking about those first and then build out the rest around that. What's the 20% of activities that produce 80% of the conversations? So what is the, the stuff that people moan about, the processes that people moan about? Um, and you might not know until you start, and that's okay. It's just we're trying to clarify thinking as we go through. And we'll keep revisiting this as we go through phase two as well. But it's useful to think about that as you go through your structures. And then the other sort of model is the five whys, which is just literally asking why five times. Um, so one why you might ask as you're going through structures is why do you need this group of people to be separate? So why do we need a separate team or why do we need a separate channel? Which is the same thinking as we do when we say start with one and build out. Um, but if you're you know working through with someone else and they say, well we need, you know, we actually we can't combine these teams, we need them to be separate. So well, why do you need to be separate? And then based on the answer, it's all well, why? Why? <laughs> why? Why? And just keep asking why after every um, answer. And the idea is that you try and drive down to the root cause about why someone really needs to be separate. And then you can validate whether that's true or not, or whether it's just surface level reason uh, rather than getting to you know get to the deep reason through the five whys. So the surface level reason might be something that sounds valid, but then we dive down deeper. It's actually a, another root cause and actually we're doing a process that we don't even need to do so it's like well you know we need this group to be separate then we should dive down it's like well we need to be separate because they're doing this this work and it's all well, actually why are they even doing that work that's not producing anything it's just a bureaucracy or red tape or something that we can just cut it out so those two um models might help you uh improve your business processes before you put a structure and some technology around it and as a general rule of thumb, I think most people are most likely to over plan, uh, have too many teams and too many channels, because I guess if you're in the thinking of planning, you think, oh, I need to plan and then do do more stuff. Otherwise, my um, my you know, I haven't done the work. Being concise is a lot more work than being verbose. Same in teams and channel structure. It's a lot harder to plan something that's really simple than to plan something that's complicated. So as a general rule of thumb, you're most likely to overcomplicate things in your planning. And you're most likely, to, if, especially if you're working with someone else, you're most likely to think of reasons to keep the status quo, especially if people have already created teams and they want to sort of protect them. So to remedy this, I guess you can ask yourself some other questions. So how can you reduce the number of teams is a different question than how many teams do we need? So well, if you've already got some teams that you've already set up, how can we reduce the number of teams? It's sort of a counter to us starting with, you know, start with one and build out. Uh, if you, you know, if you th if you find your thinking's going awry, just ask yourself, well, how can we reduce the number of teams? Similarly, how can you consolidate channels um, with teams you've already got set up? That might help you get into the thinking um, and sort of the, the counter and the opposite of just starting with one and building out. Similarly, if you've already got teams set up and you haven't completely locked stuff down, try and get into them all and see how often each team challenge is used, uh, what the amount of posts going in there. Um, remember that you don't need a separate channel just if, you, if you're using threaded chat and that mentions being used effectively. So go in and see if you know if people are starting to be a bit resistant and um, you, you, know, you might have pulled on other people to, to be into this phase of the project. Um, they might be, you might be facing, facing some resistance already it's all we'll just go and have a look so look you don't you know what we're trying to do is set up something that's long term that stays around for a long time that can enable um you know all the benefits of all the stuff we've already talked about uh, and we need to reduce the number of teams to get there go and have a look and if they're resistant go in and have a look and see if they're actually using it and if that what they're telling you is true so to recap about all the how to think slides we had in the previous lessons. So why do we need more than one team? Well, we want serendipity of large teams. So we want to try and get away with one team if we can. Um, you know, we can have quite a lot of people in a team with the right channel structure. And we should only think about needing another team in two key areas. Either we need some privacy or we need some external 
people, which I guess is all is also privacy anyway. Um, so if you got if you need privacy, can you get away with a private channel? The test for that is can you manage with one channel and you don't need Planner or OneNote or any other stuff we talked about that you can't do in a private channel yet. Um, and if you need a separate team, think how are you going to manage communications to them? Um, so ideally, it'd be a split out of people from a main team and we'd still have quite a large main team to be able to do all the other stuff we want to do uh, in Teams and Microsoft 365. So which other teams are they going to be part of too? And if you need external access, again, we've got another split out lesson to think about that, but you might not want them to have access to your entire big team and therefore you might need some smaller teams split out just for external people. Why do I need more than one team or channel? So if you are finding that you, you're thinking that you, know, you might need to share across teams is needed, then you might have overcomplicated your structure. Uh, or you could have a genuine privacy need where only a small group needs to take information from one team to another. Um, you need to decide if you're finding that you need to share stuff across teams. Is it a genuine need or is it overcomplication? And again, we can work through that together. Remember that not everyone will see every team or channel, um, but some people will. So you want to keep try and keep the view to less than 10 items. And we want to think about who needs to collaborate with who uh, in order to add value. And therefore, uh, we should be setting out which teams and channels we expect each role in the organization to see. Consider how long a team or channel is needed for, so we want to get some longevity of setup, as otherwise we'll result in losing things and permission issues over time. And think without current state constraints. So if you've already got document storage or other communication solutions or other apps you're paying for, other stuff um, that's external to Microsoft 365, uh, think without current state constraints and then layer them on top afterwards. Why do I need more than one channel? So similarly, we're going to start with one channel and then add stuff. The only basic reasons to have more than one channel are reducing signal to noise ratio in channel app mentions, the amount of simultaneous conversation threads already happening in a channel, and difference in tabs needed by different groups of users. Think conversations first. So if you need to segregate files, then you need a separate channel. We should have been thinking about the conversations that are going to happen in the com in the channel. And we should match the business process and or demo general day job work uh, to each channel. So it's for a purpose. And where are people going to hang out most often? Uh, you know, we want a place for them to naturally go similarly to do their day job. And then conversely, what might people want the option of not being notified about? So if you're using general to, for too much stuff, you might want to put that into a separate channel to then people can have the option of hiding that channel so they don't get notified about it. Don't worry too much about this because like I say, you're most likely to over plan anyway. Um, you can have it in your thinking and then not implement it. But uh, you don't need to do everything at the start, as we're going to go through in phase two. You most like to have a plan, so if you constantly think about, well, that might be too much stuff in one channel, so I have another channel, you most like to end up quite a lot off channels um, that you don't need, potentially. And then how to think about file structure. We went through para, which is projects, areas, resources, and archive. Files are never the reason to have a channel. If a channel already exists because of collaboration and posts, then you should store your files in the channel that's closest to the value generation for your organization. E.g. for a business, it's likely to be the product or the customer, because that's going to be your main focus. If no channel exists because of low or no collaboration, then store your files and folders in subfolders of the general channel. So general should be your go-to, and then only where you've got a channel already set up, any files that are you know, mostly to that channel should get in the channel. And then remember, you can link to any post or a file from any channel to any other channel. So the team is the only notion of permissions. Um, so if something's in the team, anyone can see it. But you can therefore then use SharePoint pages, wiki or links in other documents to keep everything together. So don't worry too much about your file structure because you can bring stuff together in different ways now uh, anyway. And use power to think about where you might need to store files across channels and the folder structure within them.
and get all live files in Teams as quickly as you can when we roll out. So we want to get the benefits more quickly rather than the project turning into a big IT move, which has got its own uh, challenges. The main thing is adherence to the structure you come up with, so go for good enough rather than perfect. Okay, so we're going to have a quick look through the template again. Um, we need to have an idea for the whole organization, but you only need to consider a small number of teams in detail. So if you're in a very large organization or maybe a multi-geography one, just focus on the area that you can influence most and start there and build out. Um, if you're in a small organization, obviously you should consider the whole organization together. And remember, we don't need to cover everything. So if you start going down a customer route, then you know just focus on stay the top 10 to customers and then sticking stuff in to other. So think about the amount of collaboration. The amount of collaboration on a small customer is not going to be as much as the amount of collaboration needed on a big customer. So again, think 80-20. What where's the 80% of collaboration going to be happening? Probably in 20% of the customers. Similarly, if you're splitting brands or products. Maybe go for the top 10 brands and then stick uh, another channel for others. So let's go and have a look at the template and then we'll come back to just to finish off. Okay, so similarly like we said, this first tab, the org chart working, is just a place for you to put your own organization chart. And if you want to, you can come up to insert and shapes and pick a box and start drawing some shapes around where you think you might want team or a channel and you know if you're visual you can start sort of boxing up your organization if you're a small company obviously it's going to be mostly just the entire team but it might give you some clues about where you might need some privacy similarly uh, business process design if you've got any business processes in there you can just copy and paste in the picture and if you want to draw some boxes around um, you can do that similarly that we did in the org chart working. Those are just clues to help you think about what team and what channels you might want to need. So we could say we've got team A, channel one and channel two. Um, we could have a sales channel. We could have, um, I don't know, project X, whatever teams and channels you think you need. So you might have team A for that. You might have an HR team and we'll have general and um, I don't know onboarding for hiring maybe and we might have a finance team um, and we always have general channel and um, I don't know reports say so, so you, that's where we want to list out what team and what channels we're using purpose you can add in there um, so for we can save hiring um, reports, you know, some might be uh, self-explanatory, but um, just put some stuff in there if you need to work. If you're a bigger organisation, than obviously the example I'm doing right now, um, you might want to write down the purpose for each team, or each channel, and put some comments in there. So what I've just added at the top is just a place to start thinking about, well, who do you expect to see those teams and channels? So. At the moment, I've just got senior manager, manager, knowledge worker. Um, if you're just a small company and you you know haven't got a large organisational structure, it might just be useful to think about you know your boss and your boss's boss and you know your colleagues. What do you expect them to see? If you're a large organisation, you might need to change that and have a lot more um, roles across the top. So it might be like sales manager, um, sales rep. I'm not sure. If, Sales reps are called sales reps anymore, and um, probably got a fancier title. Um, or you know, my production uh, forecaster—that's the word. What, whatever roles you think, and then sort of mark. You can just put an X if you expect them to um, see it. Um, you know, they, they might see that one, or the sales rep might might expect so to see view channel one. The sales and project X say if they're working on project X. So similar then you might need HR and you can just add them onto the side um, on the finance and so we'd expect them to see these two 
and finance to see these two. But also we'd expect then finance to be in the sales channel. Say so we might want HR to be in the project channel so they can see what's going on. So just you know a matrix of who you want to expect to see is gonna who who you expect to view each team and each channel. So uh, therefore getting notifications about those and make it as uh, comprehensive or as simple as you need for right now. Okay, so reminder, just before we, uh, you get off and undo that, then at every step, ask yourself, what's the one thing such that by doing everything else is easier or irrelevant? Um, consider changing the business process at the same time. Um, if it's if you're you know, going down a route and actually thinking, well, why are we even doing this? Then that's a good uh, hint to that. You might just need to change the business process rather than putting a lot of structure around it. And think about five whys uh, to get your thinking done on that. So I hope you like that webinar. Remember to book a call using the link in the description below if you just want some help going through what we did in the video for your organization. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've got any questions, I try and get around to all my comments on YouTube eventually. If you want quick access to questions on YouTube, then consider joining the channel. You get priority access to questions and depending on which tier you get, you also get priority access to new videos as well. And thanks for watching so far. We'll see you in the next one.